let's say you have two, plan uh, two stars here. Let's say this is similar to our star. So the mass is equal to 2 times 10 to the 30 kilogram. And uh, the radius of the the radius of the sun is approximately about 7 times 10 to the 8 meters. So let's say there's another star here. You know what? Let's make it bigger. Let's may say this is another star. So let's say the mass of this is 6 times 10 to the 30 kilogram, 3 times heavier. And let's say the radius is equal to, oh, let's say a little bit bigger, 9 times 10 to the 8 meters. Let's say the distance between them is pretty close. So we can make the distance between them something like uh, 20 times 10 to the 8 meters. Now that's pretty close. Let me make it bigger. Let's say something like 40 times 10 to the 8 meters. That's pretty close, you know. Those are binary, two binary stars that are so close because this is 9 and this is uh, 7, that's already 16. And so it blew, there's, the distance between them is very low. But those are actually called, uh, could be an overcontact binary because they're so big, and they're so close that they could actually share their outer atmospheres, either a contact or overcontact binary. But they're going around each other pretty rapidly. So we could solve some energy-related types of problems. So the, what if we say, what if these two stars, we release them from rest, uh, and then we say, what is the speed with which they hit each other, OK? So some question like this. If another comet or an asteroid or something is allowed to fall through the system, and let's say that asteroid goes through the center of mass of the system. Center of mass is going to be closer to the heavier one, right? So let's say a comet or asteroid falls through some center of mass here. So what is going to be um, if it's goes to the center of mass, what is going to be the velocity of that comet? So if that comet is uh, released from, let's say it's released from rest way at infinity. What is the velocity of a comet coming from far? that goes through their center of mass. And then part C, I'll, later on I'll ask a question. If somebody wants to, let's say there's a rocket on this uh, uh, star. Let's write it in now anyway. So let's say there's a rocket here and they want to escape. What is the escape velocity? How much energy do, does he have to apply in order to escape from the gravity of both planets? So what is the velocity of a rocket on, we'll call the star B, star A, on star B? Okay, so that's good enough info right there. Uh, so let's do the first one. Well, when released from rest, they're going to come and hit each other, right, at wherever their center of mass is. 
the initial potential energy that they had is going to be converted into two potential energies, the potential energy that they have when they hit each other plus the kinetic energy uh, of each object. So the equation looks like this. Let's write down the initial potential energy that they have between each other is equal to the final kinetic energy plus the final, the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy of each one, right? So the initial potential energy is equal to negative g m1 m2 over the distance d between their centers. And then the final potential energy, negative g m1 m2 over when they hit each other, what's the distance between their centers? We already kind of mentioned that before, right? That when you hit each other, the distance between your centers is the sum of the radii, r1 plus r2 plus half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared. So we could put here all the numbers, put this here on the other side. We have g, which is uh, g. We have uh, m1, m2. So that's uh, 2 times 10 to the 30th. 6 times this bigger. 6 times 10 to the 30th. And then we have the distance between them. This is going to be uh, negative, right? And then the distance between them is equal to uh, 40 times 10 to the 8. And this one becomes positive plus g. And then here you have uh, 2 times 10 to the 30th, uh, 6 times 10 to the 30th over the sum of their radii is going to be what? Uh, 16 times 10 to the 8, right? is equal to half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared. So what do you have there? Uh, so we could factor out the masses and basically we have, uh, we have what here? <coughs> we could basically have here 10 to the 30th, 10 to the 30th, and you have, uh, G, you have uh, 10 to the 30, 10 to the 30 is 10 to the 60, divided by 10 to the 8 is 10 to the 52. So G times 10 to the 52, okay? And you have here 2 times 6, so you can factor that out, so 12. Then you basically just have parentheses 1 over 16 minus 1 over 40. Okay, and that's equal to one half times two times ten to the thirtieth v one squared plus one half uh, six times ten to the thirtieth v uh, two squared, right? Okay, so we have that. Because these are the M1, the lighter star, which is like our sun. This is the heavier star. So what do you have here? The 10 to the 30, 10 to the 30, cancel with this one, becomes what? Uh, 10 to the uh, 22, right? Okay, and then what else do you have here? Uh, you have this one go basically 1 divided by 16 minus 1 divided by 40 at 0.0375 times uh, 12, which is this, times 10 to the power 22. Okay, now what's the G? G was, uh, we used it earlier. 6.673 <coughs> times 10 to the minus 11. 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11. So we got this, we multiplied it by 12, we multiplied it by 10 to the 22, 
Now we multiply this by 6.673.